Homework number three. The first topic is finding the slope graphically. In this activity, you'll be asked to draw a line representing both the rise and then a second line or segment representing the run. So we're going to have to create two line segments. And in order to do that, you have to first find two perfect corner points on your graph, like this is a perfect corner point. This is a perfect corner point. And this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. There's lots of perfect corner points on this graph. But when you create a rise and run, you can use any two points you like. So I'm gonna click here. And I'm gonna rise up two boxes and click again. There's my first segment, known as my rise. Now I'm going to click the top of that line and move to the right, and that will make my run. So my rise is positive 2, my run is positive 2, and rise over run is 2 over 2, which can be simplified to 1. So I'm going to type a 1 in the answer box down below the graph. Let's try this one more time. Find 2 perfect corner point, so I'm going to choose this one and that one. Now first, I click on that perfect corner point and move my hand or mouse down two times because it's going to line up over here. Now click the bottom of that line again and move to the right until you hit the line. So I've created my slope triangle here and all I need to do is count these boxes, two here, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten boxes here. Now be careful, the direction in which your triangle is facing or your line is tilting is important. This line is tilting downhill, so I need to put that negative two next to my rise. So negative two over ten is the slope, if you don't know how to simplify this, type it into your calculator and press enter, and it will simplify it for you. Negative one-fifth is the slope, and that's what I'm going to type down here in the answer box. Negative one-fifth. Again, with each graph, you simply find a corner point, and you start moving up or down until you line up with another perfect corner point to create a slope triangle. You write down the rise and run, 1, 2, 3, negative, 1, 2, 3, 4, positive direction. So my slope is negative 3 fourths. And that's what we'll type in the box. Let's take a look at the second topic, finding slope from points. In this activity, you'll need to use your slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It may help you to label these points. This is my first point, so it's x1, y1. This is my second point, so it's x2, y2. And now you can start by setting up your giant subtraction fraction. Those are permanent subtraction signs from the formula. All you need to do now is find the correct values to go into their correct positions. So y2, y1, x2, x1. Pick up your calculator and compute. Or you can do it mentally. Negative 12 over 16. Please make sure you write it in simplest form, which would be negative 3 fourths. One more time. Again, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Label your points if necessary. Set up your giant subtraction fraction. Put your numbers in the right positions. y2, y1, x2, x1. Negative 4 over 4 is negative 1.
Last question. Let's set up our giant subtraction fraction. Let's put our numbers in the right places. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and we get 5 over 0. And if you're unsure what this solution is here, type 5 divided by 0 in your calculator. If you get an error, which you will, because dividing by 0 is impossible, then you choose this button down here, undefined. So we're going to click it, it'll type it for us, and then we're done. Let's take a look at the next topic, graphing lines from equations. In order to graph a line directly from an equation without making a table, you need to identify a starting value, which is known as the y-intercept, and you need to identify a set of directions, known as the slope, to get you to other points on that line. The y-intercept is where you start drawing your first point. You go to the y-axis, to this number, and you click to make a point. From there, you're going to follow your slope, which is a rise and a run set of directions. So my rise is vertically negative 1, and my run is horizontally positive 6. And I'll click here, and on my screen, a line will appear. So let me show you with the mouse now. You click once at positive 1, and then you move that green hand, that mouse track pad, down 1, and right 6, and click. Once the line is formed, you submit your answer. Again, you start at the y-intercept. In this case, it's positive 1. So I'll draw it this time. And then the slope is negative 2. But slope has to have two numbers in its fraction. If it's not a fraction, you're simply going to write in the invisible denominator of 1. So we're going to go down 2 and positive 1, and then the line will appear. So we're going to click first at the y-intercept, and then we're going to move down 2, write 1 to create the slope of the line. One last time. This one has a y-intercept of positive 4, click. It has a slope of negative 4, and then positive 3. You don't get to use this negative sign twice. You either give it to the 4, or you give it to the 3. But you can't give it to both. Let's take a look at the next topic. Writing equations of lines. So here, the line is drawn for us, and we need to write in the slope and the y-intercept in these positions. So let's start with the y-intercept since it's the easiest to find. For us, it's 5, and the 5 is positive. And now we just need to fill in the slope fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count the distance by drawing a slope triangle between two perfect corner points. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is negative, because the line is going downhill, and then 2, which is positive. So negative 5 halves x plus 5. You could also write it in the other order, where the y-intercept is first and the slope is second. It's up to you, but both are correct. I think I'm going to type my y-intercept first, only because it was the first number that I noticed on the graph. So I'm going to type down here y equals 5, and then I'm going to type the slope fraction, the uh, negative 5 halves with an x on the side, just like that. All right, one more time. It looks like my y-intercept is 2, so I'm going to start there y equals 2, and now I notice my line is going down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1, so that's negative 1, positive 1. So I'm going to write negative 1 over positive 1 with an x on the side. Now I could write it like that. I could simplify it if I want. I don't have to have that denominator. I don't even actually have to have that 1 there. I could even write it just like that. All three of those responses would be acceptable. All right, next topic, finding basic patterns in tables. All of the tables in this topic are going to be linear, and that means that there is a constant 
rate of change from input to input. So this one has a constant rate of 1, and down here we see that it's going up by 5 each time. So I simply add 5 to 21, and I get my missing value. You're going to type that in the answer box, and move on. One more time. Look at the pattern in the x's. Is it constant? Yes, which we already knew because he said it was linear. And now all we have to do is find the increase in the values. Looks like it's plus 8 each time. And then we type that in our answer box. Click Submit and move on. The next topic is writing a linear equation from points that are plotted graphically. So we're going to write the line y equals mx plus b. We're going to write this line. But first, we have to graph the equation so we can get these values. We want to know what the y-intercept is. We want to know what the slope is. But first, we have to see the line. So I'm going to graph the dot or point at 6 on the x, 0 on the y, and click. And then negative 6 on the x and negative 4 on the y and click. And now I have my two points. I can find my rise and run which is a rise of 4 and a run of 12. So I'm going to get 4 over 12 here. Oops, sorry. 4 over 12 here. And then we need to find the y-intercept, which is negative 2. I'm going to reduce this 1 third. And now I have my equation. y equals 1 third x minus 2. I'm going to type that in this answer here. y equals 1 third with an x on the side minus 2. One more time. First, plot the points. Negative 3, negative 4. Negative 6, negative 2. You'll see the y-intercept, and then you can count the slope. So it looks like my slope is negative this time. My run is positive, so I'm going to have y equals negative 2 thirds x. And it looks like my y-intercept is negative 6, so I'll put minus 6. y equals 2 thirds, negative 2 thirds x, minus 6. Okay, let's take a look at the next topic, which is Writing linear equations from point slope in point slope form. So you may look in your reference sheet in your notebook to find the point slope formula, which happens to be y minus y1 equals x times the quantity x minus x1. And parts of this formula are permanent, like these parts, I'm sorry. This is an M. <laughs> Sorry. This is an M here. Um, so these characters are permanent. But these characters here, and that I'm tracing in purple, have to be erased and replaced. And they are replaced with x1, y1, and a slope. So all I have to do is put those numbers in the right places. So the first one is y1, which would be negative 17. The second blank is the m, which is 4. And the final blank is x1, which is 1. So this is the sentence I have. And I can leave it in this format, but I should probably simplify any time I have two negatives in a row. So I'm not going to distribute, because it wants it in point-slope form. But I am going to simplify this so that it doesn't have two negatives. So I'm going to type here in my answer box y plus 17 equals 4 times the quantity x minus 1. And now it's in simplest point slope form. Let's try this one more time. Look up the formula for the point slope equation. And then don't forget that there are some parts that are permanent, these parts, and some parts that need to be filled in.
those parts. So I'm going to go look at the information, label it up, and put it in the right places. So it looks like my Y1 is 11, my M is 8 fifths, and my X1 is 4. And I don't have any double minus signs in a row, so I'm going to type exactly what I see. Y minus 11 equals 8 fifths, parentheses, X minus 4, parentheses. All right, let's take a look at our last topic, which does not ask for the point-slope formula. It asks what is the equation of the line, and in this case, we want it in this form. The good news is you can still start with the slope-intercept formula. You can still use this formula. You can still put the pieces in the right places with y1 being here, slope being there, x1 being here, except now we're going to distribute to get rid of these parentheses. We're going to combine two negatives into a positive, and then as a final math move here, oops, sorry, we're going to isolate y. So we're going to subtract 4 from each side. So that's the only additional thing you have to do. Once completed, you can write your final answer in the box. y equals negative 4x plus 4. Let's take a look. All right, that completes homework number three.